Today I'm going to show you how I made this sustainer cart with pull-out drawers that adds a ton of storage to the shop. Stick around to see how we made it. It's time to start on a new project, making a sustainer cart to help with storage in the shop. I first break down some plywood that will make up the sides of the cart. Using the saw stop table saw with just some TS stock guides while ripping the plywood to put pressure down and toward the fence for consistent straight cuts. With the help of a sliding cross cut table and an 80 tooth fine trim blade, I cut down all of the pieces to rough size. If you regularly cross cut wide panels like this, this attachment is an absolute game changer in speed and accuracy with its 48 inch capacity. I'm going to be doing some solid wood edge banding on these pieces of plywood. So I planed the board down on the jet planer to rough thickness. I didn't want to get it exactly the same thickness as I want to be able to flush it up after cutting the edge banding. This cart is going to take some abuse in the shop, so I wanted to provide the strongest hold possible to the edge banding. So I'm going to use the 55468 60 degree edge banding set to essentially tongue and groove the banding into the edge of the board. I start by cutting the tongue, lining up the bit with the center of my plywood, and I'm again using some Jessam stock guides to keep my material against the fence and push down on the table, providing the most consistent cut possible. This bit is leaving a really nice clean cut through this red oak, which is notorious for wanting to chip out. I wanted my edge banding to be about a quarter inch thick, so I cut off extra to allow for that and repeated the process until I had all of the edge banding I needed. With that done, we can now cut the groove. Using the edge banding piece that I just cut, I'll adjust the height of the groove bit until it's flush with the top edge of the tongue. Running the edge of the plywood I wanted banded through the bit, we create the groove that the tongue will fit into. After that's all cut, it creates an absolutely perfect fit and is a super strong solid wood edge banding that will last for many years to come. I then ran all of my remaining pieces through the bit that are going to receive the banding. I apply Type Bond 2 wood glue along the groove and brush it into all of the nooks and crannies to ensure that we have everything covered well. I then use painter's tape to work as a clamp along these edges to seat it fully and provide pressure while the glue dries. Put the tape down in the middle and stretch the edges down and this will provide plenty of clamping pressure. All of the pieces now have edge banding applied and I was able to remove the tape after the glue dried overnight. I can then use a block plane to plane down the banding perfectly flush with just a few passes. I love seeing the shavings come off the plane, nothing better than having nice sharp hand tools. I did some sanding to finish things off and we have our pieces nicely edge banded and looking great on all of the high wear areas of this cabinet. All of the pieces were then cross cut down to final size. On the table saw this also trims the edge banding nice and flush at the same time. The low wear areas of the cabinet, I'll use iron on edge banding to cover up the exposed edges of the plywood. The edge banding has glue on the back side of it so when you apply heat it sticks to the material. After getting it stuck down, I used the Timberline end trimmer to perfectly trim the ends flush with the edge of the material. This can be difficult to do, but this tool makes short work of it. I then used the Timberline double edge trimmer to trim the rest of the edge banding. You push the sides in to touch the piece and it cuts perfectly flush on both sides of the material on a single pass. I flipped the piece around to do the other side. The sustainer drawers I'm using on this cart are based on a 5mm shelf pin system, so I used a shelf pin jig to help drill those. The inside panels received shelf pin holes on both sides all the way through the material. Next, we can begin working on assembly. I swapped out for the Amana Tool 5mm bit on my Festool Domino to cut all the joinery. For the pockets closest to the edge of the material, I'll use the built-in stops on the tool for easy locating. I'll plunge in and it creates a nice clean pocket and fits the floating tin in perfectly. If you don't know how the domino works, it has a bit that spins and moves back and forth at the same time to make floating tendon joinery quick and easy. For the remaining holes, I'll use the gauge on the tool to line up where the pockets will be cut. Those marks were also made on the piece. This will fit into it at the same time so I know where to cut the mating mortises. I used the right angle support bracket to help hold it square and cut those as well. Everything fit perfectly together. I repeated the same process for the other edges of the side panel to be able to assemble it into a box. I waited to cut down the divider that goes below the drawers so that I could test fit and ensure that everything is cut for a perfect fit. With that fitting nicely, I can do a mock-up of the sustainer drawers to determine where the panels need to be. I mark those with a pencil on the bottom panel on both the front and back sides and can lay out for the position of the floating tenon mortises that will be cut. I needed the piece overhanging the workbench so I could clamp it down and the pressure from the domino caused the board to flex more than I liked. So I used a bore or roller stand to help support it and remove the deflection. The mortises were pocketed out with the domino using the same reference lines that I made on the top piece and the divider fits absolutely perfectly. 
I repeated the process for the other drawer divider, and the cabinet was dry assembled again so that I could get the locations for the mortises on the drawer divider after making sure that it was square. I used the inside dividers to mark out the location on the side panels where the drawer divider would be installed since it sits right on top of those and cut all of the remaining mortises. The joinery is now all cut and I can do one last final sanding before assembly and made sure to mark out my pieces so that I didn't make any mistakes during assembly as this is a fairly complicated glue up with so many joints. To assemble the cart I'm using Titebond 3 wood glue. Titebond 3 has a longer open time, allowing me extra time to get this all assembled without the glue curing on me before I can get clamps on. This cart has floating tenons in different directions so the piece is being assembled upside down from bottom to top to allow everything to fit correctly and have all of the joints line up. I put the dividers the sustainers will later attach to and added the bottom panel to the top. Once I got everything all put together, I used Bora parallel clamps to clamp the cart together and get everything nice and square. After letting the glue dry overnight, I removed the clamps and began applying finish. For finish, I'm using some tongue oil as it's a really easy finish to apply and maintain for shop furniture. I really like using it for that. Off camera, I made two short drawers to fit in the cart to store small commonly used items in the shop. I ripped some red oak to size and cross cut it to length to act as the drawer fronts. With those all cut, I can then apply finish to the drawer fronts and top of the cart. Red oak tends to be a wood many people aren't fond of, but I absolutely love it. After making the Pana Router cart project in one of our recent videos, I decided that I needed to use red oak more in shop projects. I love the color that comes out when finish is applied. Once the finish is dry, I can install the drawer fronts using the holes I drilled for the handles to temporarily attach it to the drawer. I clamped some scrap pieces of plywood to the under the side of the drawer shelf so the faces would be flush, then lined the outside edge up with the edge of the cart to get everything where I wanted it. I opened the drawers up and drove in a couple of screws from the inside of the drawer to securely hold the face on. I removed those screws and installed the drawer handle to get everything the way that I wanted it. We moved the top onto the cabinet, removed the drawers, and secured it in place with a few screws with oversized holes drilled through the plywood top to allow for wood movement. The SIS AZ sustainer drawers are then installed. I removed the drawers from the slides and placed the slides into the cart. The holes on the slide lined up perfectly with the shelf pin holes that were drilled, making install and adjustability extremely straightforward and easy. The drawers fit nicely after having done one, the rest of them just almost installed themselves. All joking aside, I put the sustainers into the cart that I will be using to help with storage in the shop and installed some casters on the bottom of the cart. One thing that I learned really early on when building shop furniture is to always put wheels on it. It makes it so much easier to rearrange things when the time inevitably comes. The cart is now finished and is rolled into place along the back wall of the shop. I absolutely love how this cart turned out and has provided me with tons of storage with all of the different sustainers. There are all sorts of different types of sustainers to fit whatever it is that you're needing to store, and this is a great option for storage that can also go with you when needed. The drawers make it really nice and convenient to live here, and we can use it like drawers, but when we need to, we can take it with us. All of the tools used in this video are available on our website. Be sure to check them out there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. We'll catch you guys back out here on the next one. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe right over here. And for more great videos, click right over here.